Hey there, this is Joe Gilder from Home Studio Corner. I want to share, I just want to put a bug in your ear about an idea, a way to think about mixing that will be helpful if you struggle with this thing where you're working on a mix, you bring up some tracks, then you bring up some more, and then you clip the master fader, and then you bring things down, then you bring in more tracks, then you clip the master fader, and you keep going round and round on that insane little feedback loop. It's really frustrating, and it's super avoidable. Meaning, if you think about it this way, this will probably solve that problem for you to where you don't have to worry about it anymore. So here's what I want you to think about. Get your static mix. When you start a mix, I always recommend just getting levels for everything first before you start throwing, I said start, before you start throwing plugins on there and EQing and compressing and doing all the fun stuff, we need a good balance first. You've probably heard me say that before. And you may think, okay, for a good balance, I need to start moving faders. Not so fast. I would submit it would be better to not touch the faders, to leave all the faders at zero, meaning at unity, meaning at their default setting, and doing something else to get your balance, and then moving to the faders once everything is pretty much balanced. Now, I know it sounds crazy. I got the idea originally. I was doing an interview with, uh, it was with Big Al from, was it Home Recording Network? Uh, it, it was a, years and years and years ago, but he said he always likes to record with all the channels, if you're on a mixer, all the channels at zero, and you set the level of the preamp based on the fader at zero and how it sounds with everything else. So instead of just setting all the levels to the same level, right, let's drums, bass, guitar, vocal, we all set them at the same level, so it's not clipping and we're getting a decent signal, he would instead say you should set it to where it needs to be in the mix, so if you're recording a shaker track, you probably don't have to peg the meter with that shaker. You probably record it with a lot less gain than you would other things because you always end up turning the shaker down in the track because it's so piercing. So that same idea applies to the way I think about mixing a lot of times. Oftentimes when I bring sessions in or bring tracks into a session like the one I have pulled up here, uh, the tracks are way too loud. And that's fine as long as they're not clipping, but I can't mix at that volume. I've got to bring things down quite a bit. Rather than bringing all my faders down way down here, I'd rather leave them up here where there's a good amount of resolution in the fader itself and adjust the volume under the hood using uh, what Pro Tools calls clip gain. Studio One calls it just gain, I think. And what's neat about Studio One, so if you use Presona Studio One, they have the option of mapping the clip gain feature to your keyboard. So I've got these plus and minus keys on my keyboard. So when I select a piece of audio, so I'll just select everything here. If I press the plus sign, it takes that audio up 3 dB and then minus takes it down 3 dB. It's super, super helpful. What I just did before I shot this video, I pulled in some new tracks for a song I haven't heard yet and I left all the faders at zero did some panning of the tracks that I wanted panned left and right, and then literally did the entire rough static mix looking at this window and going one by one, zooming in on something like this bass track and just going up and down by 3 dB until I got everything kind of sitting where I wanted it to sit. So let's go to the loudest part of the song and just see how the balance is. Again, no plugins. This is just adjusting the gain of the audio files themselves. <laughs> So that feels like a pretty good balanced mix. And if we go to our mix window and just look at our master fader, uh, I've got it set to the K system K20. Let's just see where it's going. So it's a little bit loud. If I, as I sit in the room, I've got my fader where I normally have it for mixing. I've got my volume knob where I normally have it. It does feel a little bit loud and we're getting a little too close to clipping so I'd rather just fix that now and give myself a little extra headroom. So I'm going to bring all the tracks down 6 dB. See how that feels. That's too much. Let's go up a dB. 3 dB. So instead of bringing them down 6, we brought them down 3. It's where I 
If you can develop the discipline to sit and do this, as tempting as it is to grab a plug in and to do things to the tracks, a lot of times if you take the time to just get a good static mix using just the volume and panning, you'll have such a better time with the rest of the mix. And with this approach, we've got a balanced mix before we've touched a fader. So we've made sure that everything at zero is feeling pretty good, and then we can come in and adjust the faders after the fact. So the question you're asking is, Joe, what's the point? Couldn't I just do the same thing with the faders? Yes, you could. But to me, depending on how loud or soft the tracks is, you might have to push the faders farther up than they'll go or maybe have to pull them down way farther than you're comfortable with because I kind of like the faders to be around zero. So it's just a dumb little challenge that I give myself, but it allows me to get a good static mix without touching the faders, and then I can go rebalance things as much as I want. So either way, a lot of times I'll mix with an approach where I'll do some with the faders, but I'll always inevitably come back to some version of this where I just set the fader at zero and adjust the volume of the track itself to where it feels right. In that, way, the, the, in that way, the fader stays at zero, and we adjust the volume underneath, and everything just feels, it just makes more sense to me that way. So if you've never tried this before, maybe try it. If we're all doing clicking with mouses and keyboards anyway, I said mouses, uh, then it's not like we're missing out on touching faders with our hands. And even so, it still I still would do this kind of gain staging before I'd grab faders anyway, because this kind of gets all the tracks more in the wheelhouse of where I want them to be. I can still do fine adjustments with the faders, and as I add things like EQ and compression, it's going to change the relative balance a little bit. But if we do it right, and we add EQ, and the, the track is at roughly the same volume before and after, and we add some compression to the lead vocal to make it stand on top of the mix a little bit more, we should have plenty of headroom to not be clipping, and everything else should stay together and not fall apart. So try this on your next mix. If you don't have a mixing approach, you like this idea, but you're not sure what the next step should be, you should check out my five-step mix guide. It's a PDF that you can download for free. Go to fivestepmix.com to check it out, and I'll see you on the next one.